Welcome back to Bobblehead George. Today, we're at Revolutionary War Weekend at George Washington's Mount Vernon, and we have the honor of interviewing the Marquis de Lafayette. General Lafayette, thank you for joining us. It is my pleasure, Monsieur. It, Monsieur. Is it okay for us to call you General Lafayette, or is there something else you prefer? General is fine. My full name is Marie Joseph Paul Ivroque Gilbert Dumotier, the Marquis de Lafayette, but that is a bit of a mouthful, and so you may call me General for sure. General, it is. So, General, we have a few questions for you. We don't want to take up too much of your time because I know you're really busy today. Um, is there an event early in your childhood that inspired you maybe to uh, fight with the colonists, to, uh, to believe in the colonists' cause? What childhood events in your life may have sparked this passion you have for independence and for liberty? Well, when I was a child, I grew up in the province of Auvergne in southern central France, and uh, which is very removed from the hustle and bustle of Paris. And I thought of myself as a defender of the people who lived in the village. I dreamed of being a knight in shining armor and, and uh, protecting the, the people of Auvergne from unseen dangers. When I joined the French army as a young man, uh, I was uh, exposed to the writings and the words of the great thinkers of the American Revolution, Patrick Henry, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin. And uh, something awoke within me when I heard these words, and I began to think of, of nothing else so much as wanting to join the fight for independence and freedom for America. It was unlike anything I had, uh, I had been taught or had been aware of before. Uh, and so when I was about 17 years old, I resolved that my military career in France was not worth pursuing as long as the most important cause, and to be honest, as long as all of the most exciting battles were being fought here on this side of the Atlantic. And it took me two years to make the preparations, but uh, I arrived when I was 19 years old on the shores of America and swore an oath to conquer or die for liberty. So, as somebody who witnessed both the American Revolution and the French Revolution, how are those two events similar, and then how are those two events different? Well, they are similar in the sense that uh, both were an uprising against tyranny and uh, both relied upon the notion of, uh, of overthrowing or, or limiting or defeating a tyrant in the name of liberty for the people. They are, of course, very different because America threw off its monarchy altogether because uh, the, the monarch was in England. There was no American monarch. But France has had a monarch for a thousand years, and it was very difficult to simply abolish the monarchy. For my own part, I opposed the abolition of the monarchy. I supported a constitutional monarchy, a, a hereditary monarch, but surrounded by strong republican institutions and an elected legislature, much as can be found here in America. But uh, uh, the American Revolution reached its conclusion when it formed a new political union between the states. The French Revolution did not stop once the constitution was drafted. Uh, there were forces within the victorious uh, the supporters of liberty who wished to abolish the monarchy, who wished to abolish the aristocracy altogether. And the revolutionary tide was much harder to turn back in France than it was in America. Considering the massive role that France played in the American Revolution, what did you think about America's decision to remain neutral during the French Revolution? Well, I can understand the decision to remain neutral because the bonds that united the 13 independent states, the Federal Union of America, was very fragile. It barely survived the War of Independence, and it might not be able to survive getting into another protracted war with England. Trade with Europe was the lifeline of so many uh, mercan merchant cities here in America, and uh, to endanger the, the uh, economic prosperity of this new and independent nation, I can understand His Excellency President Washington's desire not to risk the stability of the Union, though, of course, for my own part, personally, I was disappointed that, uh, that America and France were not once again united on the side of liberty. We recently saw a Masonic apron that you gifted General Washington at the Pennsylvania Grand Lodge. What has General Washington's relationship as both a friend and brother meant to you? General Washington is even more than a friend and a brother. He is as much to me a father as I have ever known. I know that George Washington had no sons of his own. I also never knew my own father. And so to follow His Excellency's example has been one of the most formative experiences in my entire life. I, when I return home to France, I, I hope to turn my, my uh, 
I hope to turn my estate when I return to France into a, a sort of Mount Vernon in France. Uh, his example has meant everything to me and I hope to follow it in, 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 in everything I do in life. Well, thank you very much, sir, General Lafayette, for taking time to speak with us today. We really appreciate it. The pleasure has been mine, monsieur. Merci beaucoup à vous aussi. Thank you. And that's Mr. Gimby. And that's Mr. Raymond. And we're with the Marquis de Lafayette. Thank you for joining us, sir.